just installed my shiny new torch height controller and it's been working yeah that's about it thanks for watching guys see you next time gotcha while it has been working I've been noticing a few issues that after some research seems very common among standalone THCs like the JD's Garage. Here's a quick visualization. So if you could imagine for a second here that my pen is the torch. We're just trying to make a simple 90 degree cut here. If we're traveling at any significant speed or acceleration, what the torch might mimic is something like this. Now this is a little bit of an exaggeration, but it gives us a good clean story of what might be happening. So going from here to here to here, I didn't slow down at all. So if we redo that, we're gonna slow down right towards the corner. And that might look something like this. So if you could tell the difference between this one and this one is I almost came to a complete stop here. And this corner is much more resembling the 90 degrees than this one is. Now that being said, that has all to do with acceleration and deceleration. And that's something I struggled with at the beginning when I first started building this machine. Okay, so now that we understand that, how does this correlate back to the THC? Think of it kind of like pressure, right? This is the torch, it makes contact. We're coming here, we're cutting, we're cutting, we're cutting, we're cutting, and we're getting all the way to the end of the piece, we're cutting, and all of a sudden, boom, my torch just dies. So why does that happen? The THC actually measures the voltage based off of the distance of the contact, and the closer the torch is to the workpiece, the smaller the voltage is going to be. The farther away we get from the workpiece, the more that arc has to work to maintain a stable connection. The closer we are to the workpiece, the smaller our resistance value is. So when we're coming and cutting and end up slowing down to make that tight corner, we've actually just opened up an, an open space because the torch has to pause for a little bit. So as we're coming in, as we're trying to turn the corner, even if it's just a slight amount of time, that THC is going to think, oh, we're way too high now because we're experiencing a large amount of resistance so to try and compensate for that i'm going to do the only thing i know how to do and that is to go down so that's my problem that's what we need to try and figure out how can we manipulate the thc to not go down from here and here so how can we do that now this isn't the end of the world but it sure is damn annoying and it certainly doesn't help with consumable longevity at about 50 dollars a set i want to try and have these things last as long as possible and to do that i need my cut height perfect but how do we keep the torch from diving when decelerating or cutting small holes to do that we have to understand how the thc works i have no idea how this thing works well Maybe we don't need to understand exactly how it works, but we need to try and understand how it interacts with the rest of the control box. As far as I know, it all starts with the brains, my Arduino Uno. While running the program, the Arduino is constantly sending step and direction signals to our stepper drivers, which makes sense. But now you throw in the THC and things get a little bit more confusing. So I'm gonna start with these two wires right here. These wires are responsible for telling the THC the torch is on and has made contact with the workpiece. So if you could imagine, this is essentially what it looks like when these wires are off. And when the torch fires, it comes back into action. But what happens after the first arc? The THC basically takes control of the entire Z-axis. Since the only wires connecting the THC and the Arduino are the Z, step, and direction signals, there's no communication between the two. So if you were like me, my first thought was to just tell the THC to give control back to the Arduino during deceleration or small hole. But we can't do that because they don't even know the other ones there. So I headed over to the trusted internet. And once again, the DIY CNC Plasma God came to my rescue. Or so I thought. This is the guy that made the current post processor that I'm using in SheetCam. It looks like for his setup, he installed what's known as an anti-dive circuit. I was excited at first, thinking I could just buy one of these things. Of course, it's never that easy. All he had was a circuit diagram consisting of a bunch of logic gates, which he probably uploaded to a website like PCB Way or something and had it shipped in. But I don't have the software to create the necessary files to do that. Plus, now we're starting to get a little deep into the weeds and exploring unknown territory. I don't want to make this any more difficult than it has to be, but the logic behind his thought process 
Now that could work. I kept reading. In addition to the anti-dive circuit, he utilizes gerbil's laser mode. By turning this on, we allow the torch on signal to have a variable power level instead of just on and off, which I soon found out was problematic if I didn't have an anti-dive circuit. I don't know a whole lot about how laser mode works. I can just see what it physically does and make judgments based off that. So if you guys know any more about how this works, feel free to share your thoughts down in the comments. From what I read, it's mostly used on laser engravers to change the laser's power level based on the acceleration and deceleration. That way, when making turns or slowing down during your engraving, the image doesn't burn up. Sounds promising. I can tell we're close. That's because I've already did this and I'm just now doing all the editing. I started drawing parallels between the laser mode function and what I needed the plasma cutter to do, but I didn't want to make an anti-dive circuit. So I thought about it for a while. Finally, I had an idea. With the help of the DIY CNC plasma cutter god and chat GPT, I decided to modify the GRBL firmware to fire a torch like normal and turn a relay on and off based on the acceleration and deceleration of the current program. Remember this? When those two wires are off, the circuit looks like this. Ding, ding, ding. We might have a winner. Spoiler alert, it's a winner. See, here are some screenshots of the code I updated. I only updated the spindle.c file and managed to get everything to work. This probably isn't the most efficient way of doing things, but nonetheless, it's working and it's working better than ever. I'm not going to go through the code line by line because one, that's boring, and two, I'm not actually sure what it all means. Thank you, ChatGPT. Let me know down in the comments if this is something you guys might try. Thanks for watching. See you next time. If you made it to the end of the video, I'd appreciate a like and a comment. It really helps the channel out. And if you want, check out some of my other DIY CNC plasma cutter videos.